we have received a number of questions, very many in fact, and it's my pleasure to try and answer them. It is unfortunate that the authority did not issue practice notes from of the 1st of February so as to put everyone's mind at rest, because the questions are clearly an indication of the uncertainty that reigns at the moment. I'm giving you my interpretation based on the best legal advice that I could get. And at the same time, I'd like to warn you to not act hastily. It would be best in all these instances, wherever possible, to wait for the practice notes and the guidelines from the authority so as to streamline processes later, that you don't end up having to do stuff twice, etc. Let's face it, we had trust accounts for since 1977. Another few months won't hurt anyone. So to now rush with an application to not have a trust account uh, is not the best course of action of the here to the questions. Are sole traders not liable for registration? Of course they are. Any business, whether it's a company, a close corporation, a trust or a sole trader, want to trade in as, as a property practitioner, they have to register. It's maybe important in view of other questions as well to keep in mind the basic uh, understanding of, of the definitions. I'll just read you the very first clause. Property practitioner means any natural or juristic person who or which for the acquisition of gain on his, her, or its own account or in partnership in any manner holds himself, herself, or itself out as a person who, or which directly or indirectly on the instructions or on behalf of any other person, and then follows all the actions, selling, letting, managing, and all that. So, so keep that in mind. It's on behalf of another person, it's for remuneration, for example. Uh, let's take the next one. Do caretakers need FFCs? Were they open doors and allow tenants into property? No. But if they were to act uh, in any of the instances that I've mentioned, like um, offering a rental agreement or something, then of course they do. Do you need to have an FFC if you manage holiday homes? And what about big companies like Lekerslap and Airbnb who earn commission on pockets? First of all, of course, holiday people managing holiday homes must register. That's very really clear. When it gets to those companies, it very much depends on the exact operation. I tend to think that they'll have to register because if they, were to, uh, if they are collecting the money on behalf of clients and so forth, then I think it meets the definition. But it once again depends on the facts. Is a private property investment company required to register and is its staff required to have an FFC? The company itself is, is such no, if it just manages its own property and it has its own staff to manage, to, to, to let its own property, no. Do property managers, non-financial, but attending AGMs and issuing levy statements need FFCs? Again, if they only attend AGMs and take minutes, I guess not. But if they fulfill any management function, again, test the definition, then they do. Are managing agents seen as property practitioners and do they need FFCs for the managing of property of a private company portfolio? Yes, if you manage a portfolio on behalf of another company or for another company, then you meet the definition and should register. Does an FFC allow an agent to work for more than one agency? No, it does not. You register like before with one firm, but the principals of those firms could register as, for example, directors of various estate agencies or business property practitioners, practitioners as they are now called. The current Fidelity Fund certificate has the company name specified. If an agent changes companies, how can that FFC be valid? Now, this is good news here, I think, for you, uh, and that is that the Fidelity Funds and uh, certificates in future will look very different from what we used to. It will only stipulate your detail, uh, a Fidelity Fund number, and the period for which it's valid. It will not mention the company, nor your status as principal, qualified agent, or inter. And that means that since it will be registered of uh, issued for a three-year period that you don't have to make any changes in that three years. You are just a registered uh, property uh, practitioner. Hence, it will be valid to answer that question. When will the backlog with FFCs for 2022 be sorted? How will the EAAB be able to implement this if they cannot issue FFCs on time? Of course, it's now called the authority, name change. And I'm afraid it is just a name change. It's the same building, the same staff, the same defunct IT system. So I'm afraid this problem will be with us for some time to come. What is the process for people that have applied for the FFCs before the 1st of February? Well, just like anyone who applied last year. Uh, it's a one-year certificate. It's still in the name of the EAAB and it's valid till December. And it must be renewed by 31 October, at which time uh, you'll be issued with a three-year certificate from the 
PP or A. When you have not yet received your FFC, can you prove to attorneys that you have registered and use your previous FFC to prove that you are just waiting for your current FFC? Now, I'm afraid this is actually really a problem to the industry because the, uh, the conveyances are now instructed by law to only pay if you have an FFC, a valid FFC. So uh, some system will have to be put in place if you don't have one yet. For example, the arrangement that the new authority must now issue a certificate within 30 days and 20 days extension and so forth, after which you are deemed to have one, presents the same problem because I do not know how you prove a deemed certificate. What I've heard is, is that some attorneys are working on getting agents to sign a declaration that they have every reason to expect they should be issued this FFC, that they've taken all the steps and to pay on that basis. I hope that would work. Is the 30 day period and 20 day additional period for FFC's approvals applicable to registrations before the 1st of February? No, it is not. What happens with new agents who need FFCs now? Do they need to wait until April before applying? I'm afraid so. The authority has decided without any basis in law to not issue certificates in terms of the new act before the 1st of April. That's not correct, um, but, but that's how it is. So um, yeah, you'll have to wait until the 1st of April to get a practical response. And we hope that they will adhere to that date, that that be possible given the challenges in the IT system. If an agent is in possession of a valid FFC, will the, a current FFC then be issued in terms of the new act? When will the changes to the FFCs be implemented? Uh, no, there will be no new certificate issue. Everyone in possession of a valid FFC for 2022, it remains like that till December, but you reapply before end of October, at which time a new certificate will be issued. So practically new applications then from the 1st of April and renewals from the 1st of July. If candidate, candidates registered today, what is the cost of the certificate? It is 380 Rand for that first year, and of course, a 400 Rand contribution to the Fidelity Fund. Am I regarded as a property practitioner if I manage my own commercial buildings, not using an agent? As I understand it, if you have uh, manage your own buildings, it's not on behalf of another person, it's not for remuneration, you don't have to register, you're not using an agent. If I am a property investor, my properties are in a trust or company and I'm drawing a salary from that company, do I need to register? I believe not because you're not doing it on behalf of the company. You are merely employed by the company and the company is doing its own letting it's and, so, and so forth and the collecting rentals. So I would believe not. A member of the authority said on a public forum last week that a private landlord who rented a property out privately and therefore received a gain would be required to register as a property practitioner and require an FFC. Please clarify. Same as the above. Um, if, if it's a company uh, through its own staff, letting its own property, I believe you don't have to register. Where do developers fit into the PPA structure? I work for a developer selling his property. Do I need to register? And why would developers need an FFC? Are they not in effect selling their own property? Yes, uh, in future developers selling their property will have to register as property practitioners. It's just clearly clear, clear in terms of the act and the regulations. So if you work for that developer, then you will also have to register. If that developer, however, uh, registers his own business property practitioner, then only the people employed in that business will have to register and not the entire development company. Um, of course, the best option for industry is if a developer decides, I do not want to register as a property practitioner, nor do I want to start a business property practitioner, I'll rather employ a business practitioner to you know, appoint a, a, a state agent or a business a property practitioner to sell my properties. And yes, they are selling their own property, but uh, I think the thinking behind this was that they are interacting just like other property practitioners with the public. Half of that transaction revolves around the, the, the buyer, the purchaser, and they must be able to give the same good advice that any uh, state agent would have to give under normal circumstances. How does the PP Act affect the property auction industry? Well, auctioneers have to register, so all the same rules apply. As a permanent resident, I'm concerned that the Act states that FFCs will only be issued to South African citizens. Now, that's a misunderstanding. Uh, somebody who's not a South African citizen but resides here legally can obtain a certificate. 
Would a full status agent who purchases an agency franchise and thus operate a company automatically become a principal who can employ agents? No, obtaining a going concern does not make you a principal. The normal rules apply. How do private owners sell in their own capacity without a DPC? Again, my mention of the definition, they're not doing it on behalf of somebody else for remuneration, so they don't meet the definition and do not have to register. If a private person has one or numerous flats and the house is rented out, must he also have a trust account and be registered as he also holds deposits? No, for the same reason, he does not meet the definition and does not have to register. Sometimes owners sell privately. Should the owner have to be registered in order to have the property actually transferred onto the new owner? No, having an FFC has got nothing to do with the transfer process whatsoever. And uh, private sellers clearly don't have to register as property practitioners. Are auctioneers who call themselves property practitioners but don't hold FFCs allowed to earn commission? No, they'll have to register. All auctioneers now meet the definition and have to register. Candidate property practitioners starting 1 February 2022 do not know where and how to start their training, although they are 10 days down the six month period without a training program from the industry. Of course, it's now 30 days down the period. But as mentioned before, the authority has decided to only register people in terms of the new act from the 1st of February. In fact, no FFCs since 1 February has been issued, only at least start on the 1st of April. And hence nobody six month or 180 day period has started as yet. What are the penalties for intern agents who take over 12 months to complete the logbook? There are no financial penalties that I'm aware of, but the new act states that Interns have to qualify within six months, and they only have the right to approach the authority for an extension of 180 days, should in the first 180 days they have attempted to write the exam and failed. If they never even tried writing the exam, then they can't ask for an extension. Does the authority require us to do NQF 4.5? If you have done the NQF 4 certification but haven't submitted your logbook as yet, can you still write your PDE anyway. Our clear understanding in law is that NQF4 and NQF5 is no longer required, but as stated before, I would hold my horses and wait for the practice guidelines so that I take the right steps and don't act over history. Uh, again, if you wait another few weeks or months, uh, what does it really change? Do potential candidates with postgraduate degrees still require the NQF qualification? they do not necessarily understand the real estate industry. As stated, they don't need NQF, uh, we convinced, but they will need PDE4. Does the one-year training for candidates fall away under the PP Act and can a candidate become fully qualified in six months? Yes, that is our understanding. Do you lose your qualification after five years of not being in the industry? Uh, yes, in, when you re-enter after five years, you have to write a PDE4 exam or a lesser exam as the authority might determine in good time. Would a person who has worked previously for seven years as an estate agent and wrote the CIEEA exam from the 1980s need to start all over again, even having a BA degree? Yes, the answer is the same. You've been out of the industry for five years, new uh, PDE form must be uh, taken. Is the practice note still applicable with agents needing to get their qualifications and PDE form in place by June 2022? Those are all the current interns, 23,400 of them, or most of them, because as I remember that practice note that says everyone who succeeded the two year maximum period in terms of the old act must qualify by 30 June. And yes, the practice note is still in place. Now, should NQF4 still have applied, that of course would have been a laughable impossibility. But with only PDE4 having to be written in our understanding, uh, that is actually doable provided the authority can make that exam happen for everyone and maybe even more than one exam before the 30th of June, which of course presents its own challenges. Access to CPD, how will that work? We are battling to gain access and get response. As I explained before, um, this is a leopard changing spots. It's the same old board that's now authority. It's the same IT systems. It's the same challenges. So you contact the same people at the same number and try and make it happen. I paid 2000 Rand for my three year CPD cycle beginning in 2021. Will this be payable pay, pay, pay again before end February 22? Uh, yes, it will be every year, but of course for the next year, it will be the lesser amount of 1,500 Rand. 
We believe it might even be the case for this year, but that's still a moot point under discussion. Amnesty was mentioned. Where can I apply for FFCs? On the website. Now, when you say amnesty was mentioned, I'd like to read one more clause, and that's, uh, that's actually regulation 41.41 uh, in the Schedule 5, the transition arrangements. It reads, an applicant shall not be precluded from registering as a property practitioner or obtaining a Fidelity Fund certificate under the Act in consequence of such person having been in any way non-compliant with any of the provisions of the previous Act. That constitutes an amnesty. So you don't need to apply for an amnesty, you just apply for a certificate after the 1st of April and start with a clean slate on the website. If you only worked at admin and did not cancel your FFC, will amnesty be offered? The clause I've just read apply to everyone, not just uh, whatever you've done and under what circumstances and so forth. If you had an FFC you, uh, and you want to register again in terms of the new act, the, the regulation should apply. My company never deregistered me and to reinstate my FFC, I need to pay about 8,000 Rand in penalties. When will this be scrapped and will I be able to renew my FFC? Exactly the same answer as before in terms of regulation 4141, you can apply after the 1st of April. How long does feedback for penalty exemptions take to obtain as a previously disadvantaged individual? Same uh, regulation applies, uh, even if you did wait, and we know there were some issues with the PDI resolution and the application thereof and uh, feedback and so forth. But I think that comes to a stop or should come to a stop if you apply after the 1st of April. Who will be enforcing this act across the board in respect of all agencies who employ unlicensed agents, runners or interns? How is signage going to be monitored and if and unnecessarily fined, as this is a huge concern? Well, the board, the, the authority had mentioned to us that they will employ many more inspectors to um, assist with the policing of all the regulations. So we'll have to wait and see, but that's the expectation and that clearly needs to be done. What measures are in place to enforce the act specifically in the coastal areas where there is a large industry relating to holiday rentals? The majority of proprietors are not agents and have no FFC certificates. The owners will be on authority with additional staff to actually take action. And of course, you as a property practitioner will be able to report people like that to the authority like before. Whose responsibility is it to deregister an agent from the authority when they leave? It's your responsibility as a property practitioner to do so on the portal of the EAB. As a property auctioneer, does the mandatory disclosure document apply to property going under the hammer as they have traditionally been sold food stewards? Yes, auctioneers will be property practitioners and therefore the disclosure document applies. Um, please note, however, the food stewards clause is as legal and as effective as it always has been. Whatever is in this act does not change that at all. Apparently, the mandatory declaration is applicable to rentals and sales in the residential industry to protect consumers, but how does it apply to industrial sales and, and leasing where mandates are in the form of emails like growth points vacancy schedule? Now, uh, I think it will be a rational approach for the authority to allow such uh, documentation provided all the necessary information that's prescribed in the regulation is contained in that schedule. I can't imagine that the exact format and how it's set out should make a difference. What is the procedure of the annual audited figures we submit to the board by 30 June? You, of course, mean within four months after the end of the financial year of the particular business. That stays in place for all the companies that uh, audits done uh, a financial year ends before the 1st of um, February. But going forward, that becomes a six-month period instead of a four-month period, which gives you more time to get the order done. If a company has a turnover below two and a half million, will full order the records still be needed? No, not so. A review, a review process by a registered accountant will suffice. When can we close trust accounts that has never been used? Um, as far as we are concerned with immediate effect, but since the authority has put a halt on everything until the 1st of April, it will be best advised to wait till then and follow the procedure set out in the Act. If, uh, if it, if, is it only real estate companies that must be BE compliant or every individual agents, agent? No, agents, uh, natural persons are excluded from having to do so. It's only the businesses, the estate agencies. What is the BEE level required? No level was specified in the Act or the regulations. 
If your turnover is over two and a half million, how do you obtain a BEE certificate? Is there a standard template for the wording of the affidavit for the BEE exemption? Uh, no, there isn't. Well, you can find one on the BOSA website, but uh, all you are really doing is to state under oath that the turnover of your business is below two and a half million for the financial year stated in, in, in the affidavit. Please clarify if any uh, property practitioner business can apply for an exemption from having a trust account, not only a business that has an annual turnover of less than two and a half million. Yes, there is no limit on people who can apply. And should you apply, please just follow the procedures and, and, and the regulation. It's pretty straightforward. And like I suggest, please wait a couple of weeks. Then you can apply. And should you um, no longer have a trust account, the real advantage is, is that your business account then does not have to be audited anymore, but a review process by a registered accountant would suffice. Will the transformation fund assist us to pay individuals? Being a commission earning industry, it's difficult to survive without payment till your first commission. Now, the transformation fund still has to be formed. Incidentally, that's the only thing in the act that is, has not uh, taken effect on the 1st of February. Uh, and in that specific six month period is allowed. Now, once that is uh, put in place, they'll have to put together their own uh, rules and guidelines and, and, and plans and so forth. So I can't preempt that. And I, I unfortunately cannot answer that question. We'll have to wait. Please address the matter of estates charging huge accreditation fees. I have to pay a 20,000 Rand for one agent and one estate to work in, in, in that estate. I have a small business and cannot afford this. Fortunately, that has now been outlawed for practical purposes. Of course, um, the authority can't exercise any control over homeowners associations, but it's, it's clear in the regulations that no estate agent or property practitioner is allowed to participate participate in any such scheme. It'll be in breach of the regulation and you will then be prosecuted. So that should put an end to the preferred agency issue with uh, homeowners associations. What about Privy Seal? This was terminated by the EAAB. Will this be reinstated? I have no idea, but I also have absolutely no reason to think that they're going to do so. I need to register an estate agency. Do I still contact and do this through the EAAB? Yes, of course, it's now the PBRA, but same procedures as before. The industry was given only two weeks to comply with the final version of the regulations. Is there a period of time for the industry to make these changes to the marketing material, cards, boards, etc., as well as the many digital assets that property practitioners use? Now, technically, the authority can't uh, suspend the act. It kicked in on the 1st of February. But they can make an announcement, and I hope and trust that they will, that they will not take any action in this regard um, after, uh, you know, with immediate effect, uh, giving the industry some time to get this done. It would just be totally unreasonable not to. Apart from which, the authority certainly does not have the staff complement at the moment to try and enforce such an arrangement on the industry with immediate effect. But I am pretty sure a practical note will be forthcoming in this regard soon. I've received an email from the EAB stating that I have outstanding debt, which I'm unaware of. Uh, now, please look at the practice notes and you can find that on Raposa.coza as well. Uh, there was a practice note stating that uh, there's some fraud, some letters went out fraudulently from somewhere else and that they warning agents not to respond. Please consult that practice note before you do anything because it seems to be illegal. Can an agent ask an unregistered person to take photos on their behalf? Absolutely, yes. Have education levels north of NQF5 been considered at any level or would it be considered at some point? For example, honors, degrees and so forth. Now, I don't know if anyone considered that, but nor is it really an issue because that would be an optional thing to do. It certainly will not be a prerequisite of becoming an estate agent. To confirm from 1 February, all candidates have six months to comply. Do all the non-compliances in the old body fall away? Yes, uh, regulation 4141 that I read, start fresh, nothing that was amiss in the old act can be held against you. Of course, with exceptions, I should have added basic exceptions that provided you're not being prosecuted criminally, that there's no disciplinary action and process, and that your FFC has not been withdrawn before for some misdemeanor. Um, so barring those uh, qualifications, um, you, you're okay and don't have to worry about that. 
Uh, thank you. I hope that made some sense.